Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Grand Review podcast for the 2020 Austrian Grand Prix. What should have been round nine of the season now is round one amid the global pandemic of COVID-19. Formula One has been on a shutdown period for several months. And finally, after 217 days, action has returned to the track. It looks completely different, though. Masks are on in the paddock. Social distancing measures apply and not many journalists around. And of course, the biggest difference, no fans at the circuit. But we still got one of the greatest races we've seen in a very long while. We seem to be on a run of good races in the past few years. And let's hope we can continue here going forward, because next weekend, of course, we're back here at the Red Bull Ring for the Styrian Grand Prix. So let's see, first of all, what the championship looks like in this new calendar. We fly over from Abu Dhabi 215 days ago to the first round of Formula 1 2020. It's the Austrian Grand Prix at the Red Bull Ring. And we're here twice, of course. Next weekend, we're here for the Steiermark Grand Prix. The weekend after, it's the Hungarian Grand Prix on the 17th to the 19th of July. A week off before the British Grand Prix in Silverstone. A week later, at Silverstone, the 17th anniversary Grand Prix. And then the Spanish Grand Prix in mid-August. A week off before the only two next confirmed races of Belgium and Italy in early September. So the first practice session got underway on Friday morning at 10 o'clock UK time. The first session since Abu Dhabi last year for official, of course, pre-season testing was back in late February, early March. But we decided to go live for that. We thank 1,602 people who tuned in to the radio commentary of the first practice session. It is available to listen to now. We'll be doing those quite a few times this season as well. So thank you very much to all of our viewers who joined in. Now, free practice one was very eventful as teams and drivers got to grips with their new 2020 machinery. Let's take a look in the report. Let's take a look then at what happened in the first practice session of the 2020 Formula One season. And it was a pretty interesting session as well. We were broadcasting live radio commentary onto YouTube. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. I believe it's over 1,500 viewers uh, joined me, Dad and Megan for the commentary. So thank you for that. But everybody was a little bit cautious to get going everybody would wanted to be the tortoise nobody wanted to be the hare in the story so everyone was gingerly going out but overall it was the brand new black livery of the mercedes duo lewis hamilton and valtteri bottas taking first and second in the opening practice session that was the surprising factor as well max verstappen was third fastest. He was six tenths off of, of of the two Mercedes. It was Hamilton top, a 104.816. Valtteri Bottas went into second place as well. Carlos Sainz third and Sergio Perez in fifth place as well. An interesting uh, mix for the drivers. Rain fell within the first 30 minutes of the practice session, so that limited the running. Drivers chose to go out on intermediate tyres, however, quickly discovered that the track was drying as limited rain fell, so they went back to the slick tyre compounds, mainly the softs, the red wall tyres and the hard compounds we saw on Lewis Hamilton as well. But the soft tyres were used by Max Verstappen to finish third, under three tenths behind Bottas. Uh, turn one, he spun with 20 minutes to go. He collected too much damp on the entry curb, and there's a little bit of a dip in towards turn number one. And he just hit the apex, got it round, and spun round. I don't think he could do to avoid that one. Sergio Perez under a tenth of a second, separating him and Max Verstappen from third place as well. That racing point, basically a copy of last year's Mercedes, but it still looks very competitive with Sergio Perez and Lance Stroll at the wheel. It should be something to watch. Lando Norris managed as well ahead of Alex. Alexander Albon in P7. Eighth place for Daniel Ricciardo. He was on the medium compounds throughout for the Renault. Kevin Magnussen was P9. And then it was 10th and 11th uh, for the Ferraris as well. 10th and 12th, sorry. Leclerc finished in 10th. Sebastian Vettel 12th for Ferrari. They have a major flaw in their car coming into this Grand Prix. And the next weekend's uh, race here in Austria for Steiermark. But they have an upgrade that isn't ready until the Hungarian Grand Prix. So it's not looking good that Ferrari are going to 
be able to bring something into the mix uh, this weekend. Esteban Ocon got his first run back out onto a Formula One practice session since 2018 after taking a year out. However, part of his barge board came off on the start finish straight, causing the first virtual safety safety car that was the only uh, safety car or red flag delivered today for Formula One and numerous things happened in Formula Two and Formula Three. Grosjean was last. He had a brake problem with fluid. Locked up on the, when he, when the rain fell on intermediates. Locked up, went straight on. Had to coast back in and in pole mode. And unfortunately for him, a brake issue kept him out for the remainder of the session. Did get out to do a practice start, however, but didn't set a meaningful lap time. It was a fantastic first session. Eventful as well to get back into it. Let's take a look at how the final classifications are after free practice one. <laughs> So the first practice session back for 2020 is underway. And Lewis Hamilton topped the timesheet to 104.816, completing just 42 laps. Valtteri Bottas is second for Mercedes and 1-2 for them, a 105.172. Max Verstappen is third, a 105.418. Carlos Sainz fourth, a 105.431. Sergio Perez fifth on a 105.512. Sixth place for Lando Norris, a 105.621. Seventh for Alexander Albon, a 105.701. Daniel Ricciardo is eighth, a 105.860. Then we get Kevin Magnussen, ninth, on a 105.907. Charles Leclerc rounds out the top ten on a 105.924. Lance Stroll is eleventh, a 106.074. Sebastian Vettel, twelfth, a 106.077. Esteban Ocon 13th on a 106.270, Antonio Giovinazzi 14th a 106.360, Kimi Raikkonen 15th a 106.365, Pierre Gasly is 16th a 106.404, George Russell 17th on a 106.495, Nicholas Latifi 18th a 106.906, Danny Kvyat 19th a 106.943, and Romain Grosjean rounds out the grid. A brake problem kept him out which is why it's a 146.361, his only lap time. Lewis Hamilton, Mercedes, starting 2020 where they left off 2019. Absolutely domination from them. Could they keep it up, though, as the track fully dried ahead of free practice two, and we really got to see the team's understandings of their new race run strategies, with Pirelli giving them a strict amount of tyres and strategies to go on of a more pack racing amid the pandemic. So, teams are limited, but they've got an extra set of tyres in this session as well to use. <laughs> So free practice two has just concluded here in Red Bull Ring, Austria, and it was a joyous sight. No rain for this session, as was predicted coming into the weekend. So we got a clear run at how the drivers seem to be going forward for the 2020 regulations. Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas repeating what they did in free practice one. A 1-2 for Mercedes in that staggering new black livery. Uh, a 104-304 for Hamilton. Bottas was just under two tenths of a second back. Surprisingly, though, Sergio Perez went third fastest for Racing Point. That car in race trim looks absolutely fantastic it was quicker than fourth place driver of Sebastian Vettel F Vettel and Ferrari got work to do as well as Charles Leclerc he ended up down in ninth place as well Renault looking strong they have two of the engines up there Daniel Ricciardo in fifth place London Norris in sixth Lance Stroll seventh as well for the racing point Verstappen eighth with his teammate Albon down in 13th, Red Bull having a lot of problems in that session. Both drivers spinning at turn one once again. Exactly the same. There's a dip in the middle of turn one. So as the driver's going through it, they hit the accelerator right when the rear left was sort of half off the ground in the bump. It spun up too much and lost the car of the rear easy to do. We saw a lot of spins in the second practice session as well. Esteban Ocon had a little spin as well but uh, Danny Kvyat lost there on turn one as well for the Alfa Ray. Exactly the same as the two Red Bulls as well. Alexander Albon, Antonio Giovinazzi was 14th, Kevin Magnussen 15th, Romain Grosjean on 16th. He went for a little trip through the gravel trap as well. The same as Kimi Raikkonen who was down in 19th place as well. He had a terrible session as well, locking the front up and going straight off the track. Verstappen did that as well at the turn 6-7 complex. 
place. Uh, Russell 18th and Latifi 20th. So Williams not really there or thereabouts, but they're really within two seconds. And Latifi, of course, getting used to the car again for the first time driving it since pre-season testing 16 weeks ago. And he is a rookie as well. So everybody is very much taking today as a development as we go forward for FP3 tomorrow, which we're going to see everyone pushing for. Qualifying as well, a true indication of who's quick and who's not. And of course, the race on Sunday will determine the running order for 2020. But let's take a look at the final classifications for the second practice session here at the Red Bull Ring for the Austrian Grand Prix. <laughs> In the second practice session for the 2020 Austrian Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton topped the timesheets once again, a 104.304. Valtteri Bottas was second, a 104.501. Then Sergio Perez put it into third place for Racing Point, a 104.945. Sebastian Vettel, fourth, a 104.961. Then we get Danny Ricciardo, fifth, a 104.972. Lando Norris once again in 6th place on a 105.087. Lance Stroll 7th on a 105.135. Then we get 8th for Max Verstappen on a 105.215 at Red Bull's home Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc, the first of the Ferraris though, to really have problems this weekend in free practice too. He's 9th on a 105.298. Carlos Sainz rounds out the top 10 on 105.352. Esteban Ocon is 11th the fastest on a 105.415. Danny Kvyat 12th on 105.443. And then Alexander Albon 13th on 105.453. Antonio Giovinazzi 14th for Alfa Romeo 105.608. Kevin Magnussen 15th on 105.678. Romain Grosjean 16th on 105.908. Pierre Gasly 17th on 106.016. Then we get George Russell, 18th, a 106.125. Kimi Raikkonen, 19th, a 106278. And Nicholas Latifi rounds out in 20th place on his first day as an official Formula 1 driver, a 107.124. <laughs> Friday went, Saturday came, but in between that, Red Bull decided to protest the Mercedes DAS system that was first revealed to us in pre-season testing. Now, it has been banned for the 2021 season, but Red Bull wanted confirmation whether it was legal to use this season. So the stewards spent six whole hours scanning through every document in both the sporting and technical regulations and decided that the DAS system used on the Mercedes is legal because it is not changing the suspension while driving. It is part of the steering complex. Now, Red Bull didn't want to outright ban this. Rumours going around the paddock is that they have a very similar system waiting in the wings. Now, whether or not that was to be installed in Austria didn't prove to be right. There was no such device. But whether or not it was going to be introduced at this weekend's coming up of the Styrian Grand Prix, that is still remaining to be seen. Either day, they wanted to know exactly what was what, and they got it. It was a very interesting run here for Free Practice 3. <laughs> So let's get in then to the third practice session, and that's what you're all here for anyway. And once again, it was a Mercedes 1-2. Lewis Hamilton for the third time this weekend, topping a practice session, a 104.130, separated by less than a tenth and a half of to his teammate of Valtteri Bottas. And then third place, Red Bull finally up in their game. Max Verstappen had a great session. Sergio Perez once again proving that that racing point has a lot of grunt. And he went into fourth place. Now, last night it was announced that Red Bull had protested the Mercedes DAS system for clarification. Is it legal or is it illegal? The stewards took six hours, but it was finally decided that DAS is good. Uh, which is the joke that's been going around the paddock. It's good. It's legal. So now, what are Red Bull going to do? Are they going to put a system on for themselves? We don't know. That's the rumour going around in the paddock that Red Bull do have a DAS system to go on their car. Mercedes are happy. But are they going to use it in qualifying? Because once a car leaves pit lane, it's in Park Ferme. So no changes can be made in terms of the setup. Moving the DAS system is changing the axis of the suspension, but it's also a steering aspect. So it's changing the differential of the car. So let's just see if, they, if Mercedes do use it in qualifying 
and if Red Bull or any other team protest. We're also expecting a protest about the Racing Point car because it's basically a copy of last year's Mercedes. Now, that's not illegal, and Racing Point have been in contact with the FIA stewards all throughout the winter. They say it's perfectly fine. So we're in a sort of a little bit of an unusual situation here, but we'll just have to keep on a lookout to see if it's legal or not and to see if there's any more protest going forward. Ferrari were fifth, and it's Charles Leclerc who was ahead of the other Red Bull of Alexander Albon. Sebastian Vettel in seventh place as well. Ferrari, we know they have an upgrade coming for the Hungarian Grand Prix and are going to struggle in the first two race weekends here in Austria. And, of course, next weekend at the Red Bull Ring for sh the Stiermark Grand Prix. You've got to really pronounce that uh, right. Lance Stroll in eighth, Pierre Gasly in ninth, and Landon Norris in tenth. Six teams in the top ten. That is staggering once again. Renault, eleventh and twelfth. They've got work to do. Ocon had a little bit of an issue that kept him out of the session uh, towards the latter half. He lost about 20 minutes. Danny Ricciardo putting in the laps as well, just trying to get used to the car. He was the last driver with in a second of Hamilton's time. Uh, Carlos Sainz, 13th as well. He was out f early on in the session. He was the only car on track for about 20 minutes as uh, the teams prepared to run for qualifying setup. Danny Kvyat was 14th. Romain Grosjean, 15th. George Russell, 16th. Uh, Magnussen, 17th. Giovinazzi, 18th. And Raikkonen, 19th. So not a good day for the Alfa Romeos. And Nicholas Latifi crashed out of the session, bringing out the first red flag of the 2020 season in terms of the natural session. Coming out of turn one, he got on the rumble strips, the car darted towards the left, towards the wall, he caught it with some oversteer, and then understeer, the car spun round, knocked off the front wing and pirouetted 360 uh, about three times. No damage to the car, apart from the front wing, so we should see him in qualifying as well. But he lost 35 minutes in the session. A dramatic one here then, all ready to go for qualifying. Let's take a look at what the times are after free practice three for the Austrian Grand Prix. <laughs> So Lewis Hamilton topped the third practice session. He's topped all the sessions this weekend, but a 104.130. Second was Valtteri Bottas, a 104.277. Max Verstappen, third fastest, a 104.413. Sergio Perez maintaining that racing point dominance in fourth, a 104.605. Charles Leclerc in fifth place, a 104.703. Alexander Albon in sixth, a 104.725. Sebastian Vettel is in seventh, a 104.851. Lance Stroll, eighth on a 104.918. Pierre Gasly, ninth, a 104.949. And Lando Norris rounds out the top 10 on a 104.950. Esteban Ocon is in 11th on a 105.037. 12th for Danny Ricciardo, a 105.088. Carlos Sainz is 13th on a 105.177. Danny Kvyat, 14th, a 105.290. Romain Grosjean, 15th, a 105.363. Then we get George Russell, 16th, a 105.565. Kevin Magnussen is 17th, a 105.648. Antonio Giovinazzi, 18th, a 105.654. Kimi Raikkonen, 19th, a 105.773. And Nicholas Latifi in 20th, a 107.049. <laughs> Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes topping all of the practice sessions then this weekend in Austria. A very good sign of things that could come in qualifying. Let's take a look then at what happened. Here's the highlights from qualifying. Qualifying one. And the green light is on and qualifying for 2020 is underway. This first qualifying session, 18 minutes long, all 20 cars heading out onto the circuit. At the end, we will lose the slowest five drivers from this qualifying procedure before we go on to qualifying two and the final top 10 minute shootout for qualifying number three. Lance Stroll is top of the timing boards at 104.309. So Lance Stroll rockets to the top with 25 seconds to go. Giovinazzi, Raikkonen, Magnussen, Grosjean and Latifi at the moment are all in the drop zone. 
The driver at risk is George Russell. Can he make his first qualifying two appearance in his Formula One career? Five, four, three, two, one. The checkered flag is out. The times now count. Can you just be mindful, Lewis. It's, it's going to be Daniel Ricciardo first across the line. Ricciardo goes P8. Next up, Kimi Raikkonen. Raikkonen is eliminated. He can't get through. Grosjean goes 15th. That knocks out Russell, who has confirmed. Magnussen is eliminated in the other house as well. Giovinazzi could knock out Roman Grosjean. Ocon goes 13th. We see Pierre Gasly in 10th, getting all out of shape, coming out of turn 10. He crosses the line. Gasly goes 9th. And I think that is Lance Stroll confirming and so Sergio Perez 1st and 5th. Leclerc goes 4th. Verstappen goes top. 104-024. Lewis Hamilton, I think he's gone a lap as well. Bottas goes 2nd. 104. Triple 1 across the board. Here comes Nicholas Latifi in his first qualifying. Can he get out of the drop zone? Unlikely. It is unlikely. Out goes Latifi. And Lewis Hamilton goes third. A 104.198. So for the first time this weekend, Red Bull top a session. And it is Max Verstappen top. A 104.024 from Bottas. Hamilton. Stroll fourth. Leclerc. Sainz. Perez. Vettel. Raikkonen and Gasly complete the top ten. Norris is 11th. Albon in 12th. He must have some issue not to have gone out again. Ocon qualifies for Q2 for the first time in his return. Kvyat and Grosjean does get through in 15th place as well. But eliminated from the first part of qualifying is Kevin Magnussen, George Russell, Shantonio Giovinazzi, who on his fast run had a little bit of an oversteer moment and turned four and threw the gravel trap. Kimi Raikkonen eliminated as well. And the Williams of Nicholas Latifi on debut will start in 20th place. Qualifying two. And the green light is on, and 15 minutes is underway with 15 drivers Verstappen, Bottas, Hamilton, Stroll, Leclerc, Sainz, Perez, Vettel, Ricardo, Gasly, Norris, Albon, Ocon, Kvyat, and Grosjean all battling it out on track once again. And at the end of this 15 minutes, we will lose the slowest five drivers to go into the top 10 shootout of a 12 minute qualifying three session and this is going to be dramatic because the top through the top 16 in the previous session as i said was separated by less than a second 20 seconds left then in the second part of qualifying Esteban Ocon out of the last corner a bit wide he'll be the first one and he stays 14th. Ocon can't improve. He gets another crack at it, though. Bottas goes top. 103-015. Three seconds left. Lando Norris again on the lap. It'll be Lewis Hamilton first across the board. And he can't improve on his time. Stays second. Lando Norris goes in third. Sainz in ninth. Improves up to fifth place. Sebastian Vettel all out of shape in tenth place. And he doesn't improve. If Kvyat improves, we can kick out a Ferrari. Kvyat goes 12th. Ricardo doesn't improve, stays eighth. Leclerc is ninth. Can he improve on the order? No. Proves his time, not position. Grosjean stays 15th. Gasly across the line, stays 11th. Gasly goes, and Vettel's out of qualifying. Albon goes third. Perez is fifth. And can, is Ocon going to improve? I'm looking, no. Sebastian Vettel is knocked out of qualifying here in the Austrian Grand Prix. We knew the Ferrari had issues. We knew the car was not going to be competitive until Hungary. But we did not expect the four-time world champion to be eliminated in qualifying two. Charles Leclerc scrapes through by the skin of his teeth. It is Sebastian Vettel. Vettel eliminated with both of the Alpha Tauris of Pia Gasly and Danny Kvyat. Esteban Ocon on his return to Formula One is also eliminated. And Romain Grosjean, the final driver in 15th place, eliminated. My goodness me, what a shocker this Austrian Grand Prix has delivered. Vettel out of qualifying starts 11th. Has 
has Vettel made a mistake? Let's have a look through turn one. He catches his oversteer right over the yellow sleeping policeman. And Vettel making a mistake at turn one on that last lap. Probably cost him the time needed. Qualifying three. The green light is on. And the third and final part of qualifying is underway here in Austria. A further 12 minutes with 10 drivers all battling it out for pole position. And they are Bottas, Hamilton, Albon, Norris, Perez, Stroll, Sainz, Verstappen, Ricardo, and Leclerc. Seven minutes and 40 seconds remain and Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton are on a lap time. That could be the pole lap time. 103.3 was the time in qualifying two. And is Bottas about to do anything that could match? Lando Norris was third in that last session as well. He could do something as well. Right. Clap your hands, cross your fingers. Is this going to be a qualifying session deserving of a seven-month wait? Bottas into the last corner, flicks it through, gets on the Astro turf in the exit, just within the rules. It's a 102-939. Brilliant time, Hamilton. It's a 103-061. Bottas on pole position at the moment by a tenth. Brilliant time. 102-939, and that is a stellar time. Lando Norris abandons his run for some reason, so Sainz goes third, Perez fourth, 104-141. So, a 62-second lap around Spielberg, as Charles Leclerc cuts the timing line, goes fifth fastest, the last, the last of the current runners. Third goes Verstappen on 103-551. Albon goes fourth, 103.868. Norris, no time set. And Stroll and Ricardo haven't left the pit lane. So on the first run, it's blood to Bottas. A 102.939. Hamilton a tenth away. That's the time to beat here in Austria. Lance Stroll completes a lap time then, goes P6 overall, going to be waiting as well to see what he can do. So as Ted said, Lando Norris now at the back of the field in the running order, that's why he backed out of it. So, this is it. One minute and 30 seconds remain in the first qualifying session for the 2020 season. Bottas on pole at the moment with a staggering 1 minute 2.939. Lewis Hamilton is 0.122, so a tenth off of that best time. And he lost that by going wide in the exit of turn 1 and over the yellow sleeping policeman Bollard. So... This is it. Who's going to take pole position for the Austrian Grand Prix? Who's going to start the first race of the season on a pole? Everyone's now starting to back up again. They're all trying to get a socially distanced level, but you don't have to when you run on the track. So they've really got to start going. It's almost a repeat of what happened in Monza. 40 seconds left. Away we go now. And the times can begin. Verstappen's on the board. Lando Norris is on the board as well. So is Bottas. He starts a lap time. Albon starts a lap. Lance Stroll has said, that's enough for me. He's gone into the pit lane. The best he can do is sixth place. Lando Norris, as I said, started a time. Danny Ricciardo has now also started a time. 16 seconds left on the clock. Bottas wide, wide, wide. Wide at turn three, and Remus missed the apex by country mile. Drops down the hill towards turn four and Sodgeless Gold. Is it going to be any good? It's a better one. We've got a yellow in the third sector. There's someone off, and it's Valtteri Bottas. Bottas bins it at the last corner of turn 60, and he's done it. Hamilton's going to be with. He can't improve, surely. He had to lift, and Hamilton's off the track nearly. He has an oversteer moment. Bottas bins it in turn four. Lando Norris goes into fourth place as the checkered flag is out. Bottas can't improve. Can Lewis Hamilton take the flag? He's wide in the exit. Hamilton can't improve. 12 thousandths of a second, the difference. Ricardo goes tenth. I don't think it's going to be Albon. No, 
It's not Perez. Valtteri Bottas goes off the track, trying to improve on his own best time, but doing so prevents his teammate Lewis Hamilton improving, and thus he keeps pole position. Valtteri Bottas, like he did in Australia last year, takes pole position for the season opening Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton is second. It's a Mercedes lockout on the front row. It's the second row start for McLaren. The first time that's happened here in Austria since 2016. Max Verstappen starts in third place. Alex Albon is fifth. Sergio Perez goes into sixth place. Leclerc seventh. Sainz eighth. Stroll ninth. And Ricardo in tenth. Bottas off the track with rallying, but takes pole position for the Austrian Grand Prix. This is what happened to Bottas coming into turn four and Sochler's goal takes the curb, rides the exit too much and just gets a wheel on the gravel and it pulls him into the gravel trap. That was nothing he could do and it definitely wasn't deliberate. And poor Valtteri Bottas. But even so, he keeps pole position with the time he did earlier and he spun as well on the grass. He had a complete 360. And that's not good at all. That kept the yellows out from anybody else improving. Hamilton went very wide in turn 10. He got caught on the rumble strips and it shot the car out again. And I think that also cost him 12 thousandths of a second, the only difference between the two. But Valtteri Bottas is on pole position for the Austrian Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton starts second and Max Verstappen starts in third place. <laughs> Pole position goes to Valtteri Bottas then for the 2020 Austrian Grand Prix. But Lewis Hamilton came under investigation for speeding under the yellow flags and also going wide at turns 9 and 10. Now, the stewards once again investigated Lewis Hamilton and it went very well long into the night. It was finally decided that officially... There was nothing wrong with speeding under the yellow flag, as the steward said that Lewis had said to them that they did see a yellow, but he also saw a green flag just before the yellow board. So, in that instance, Lewis said he saw a green flag. So the stewards accepted that and decided not to penalise his fastest lap, which put him 12 thousandths of a second off Valtteri Bottas. However, the stewards took a dim view of the track excursion at turns number 9 and 10. Hamilton got off the track numerous times, so deleted his fastest lap for his first run. So that, again, didn't stop him taking second place because the 12 thousandths of a second lap was fastest. However, just after our Sunday preview show, 20 minutes before the start of the race, Red Bull protested the decision as they had found new evidence to the fact that actually there was a yellow flag that Lewis would have been notified about, and he didn't lift. So the stewards decided very late to give him a three-second, a three-place grid penalty for failing to slow for the yellow flags. This dropped him to fifth place on the grid. So the actual starting grid for the Austrian Grand Prix looks like this. Valtteri Bottas on pole position alongside him on row one is Max Verstappen. Lando Norris now starts in third place for McLaren. He's alongside Alexander Albon in fourth. Lewis Hamilton with that three-place grid penalty starts fifth. Sergio Perez is sixth. Charles Leclerc is seventh and Carlos Sainz eighth. Lance Stroll ninth and Danny Ricciardo rounds out the top ten on the fifth row. Sebastian Vettel still starts eleventh alongside Pierre Gasly. Danny Kvyat is thirteenth alongside Esteban Ocon. Romain Grosjean is fifteenth with Kevin Magnussen starting in sixteenth. George Russell 17th and Antonio Giovinazzi in 18th, Kimi Raikkonen is 19th and Nicholas Latifi in 20th place. A bad weekend then for Lewis Hamilton with numerous investigations. Your commentary team for radio highlights of the first round of the season, the Austrian Grand Prix, are from myself, Ian Birch and Megan Birch. Round 1, the Austrian Grand Prix. Green flag at the back, 217 days since the last Grand Prix of the season. It's time to get 2020 underway, five on. 
action in Austria. Great start from Sebastian Vettel in 11th place. But Max Verstappen has to go with Lando Norris. Bottas leads into turn one. And immediately Albon forces off Lewis Hamilton. Vettel wide. Leclerc as well is side by side with Sergio Perez. Up to turn three. Remus we go. And already Lando Norris coming under pressure from Alexander Albon on the inside at turn one. And number three. Hamilton has just the advantage to Perez. Bottas skimpering away into the distance. Down the hill to Sotras Gold we go. And is Lando going to look round the outside? Yes, he is. Verstappen has the inside line though. And keeps the position as Hamilton makes contact with the Red Bull of Albon. Sainz goes on the inside of Sergio Perez. Charles Leclerc looks to the inside. Coming at turn seven and eight. Perez holds it round the outside. And now there's some more on that blue smoke we saw in practice is billowing out from the back of the racing point but he gets ahead of Charles Leclerc replay of the start watch the great launch that Valtteri Bottas gets and Max Verstappen immediately has to defend from Lando Norris Vettel got actually a good start but in the second phase he just fell apart Hamilton runs wide over the oval strip and then it's just a drag race up to turn two Ferrari already there racing point getting ahead Carlos Sainz having to differ, differ this way and that way Megan talk us through Hamilton Hamilton starts off good. He has a little bit of running with Albon nearly right there. Yep, they, they nearly touch wheels, but uh, Hamilton opts out. Causing him to go off track. Still doesn't get in front of Albon because he's going a bit too wide. But that's Hamilton now just passing Lando Norris into Remus at turn three. So Hamilton up to fourth. It seems to me, Dad, that he's getting those places back from the fifth place he was uh, denied earlier. He is, but if you notice, the first corner, the late breaking of both Red Bulls. Yeah. Right? Both Red Bulls were on the limit there of being um, of forcing drivers off the road. It's a battle now between the two Mercedes and the two Red Bulls as Hamilton has DRS on the start finish straight to Albon. And I know this is race one, Dad. We have got another race here in Austria next week, but it's a bit follow me leader at the moment. It takes a while for this Grand Prix to really heat up like we saw in previous years. Yeah, I mean, you've, he's got to get close to him, maybe. No, he's Al now close to him. Albon defended the inside line and moved when he thought Hamilton was going to look, so wasn't really going to make Think, move there. Go on. I think Lewis was just testing the water there. He's going to make a move there round the outside and he's done it. Hamilton up to third place into Sotchler's gold with a move that Sebastian Vettel pulled on him last year. He's obviously learned from the four-time champion and he's made the move stick on Alexander Albon. He moves up in position and now can set off after uh, Max Verstappen is stole his grid slot in second place. Oh! We got a problem! It's Max Verstappen! He's stopping! Max What drama in the opening round of the season. Red Bull, after all their trouble, out. Well, that's interesting. Dad's completely blank. The screen's dead. Uh, it, the same thing happened in the... Um, Formula 2 earlier. It, the same Formula 2 earlier. Um, <laughs> if he can crawl back to the pits, I think they can. It's, it's either, as Martin just said, it's either hydraulic, something's not changing the gears in that car. And that could be electronic or, or, or hydraulic. He's tried to get You've it going. You've got to feel for young Max. You've got to feel for young Max. He's tried to get it going. The car's installed. He's getting out of the car. Max Verstappen on lap 14 <coughs> of the Grand Prix is out of the race. Lance Stroll has an engine problem and they're trying to manage it. What is it, race one or race 20? Is it going to be that race where there's only three drivers left again? Looks to me, Dad. <laughs> I feel that um, these engines were produced for Australia yeah. and that they've been sat too long. And I reckon it's just wear and tear on the seals. I mean, I, I know they'll check everything they can, but there's internal, internal O-rings that they can only do that if they strip them down. Were they allowed to strip them down? No, the, the teams went into lockdown for the summer break as well. And Daniel Ricciardo 
Is it or is it? Is it? Is it? Yes, yes, yes. Danny Ricardo is stopping. And he has got the same what? issue. A limp home mode. He's stuck in third gear. Both former it's teammates. Say. And it's really engine smoke. Look. I really feel it's to do with the um, the, the, the O-rings in the, in the gearbox. Well, we saw this happen in Formula 2 a lot. It's happening now a lot in Formula 1 around Spielberg. Daniel Ricciardo becoming the second driver to have issues as Sebastian Vettel gets through a large stroll. And I think Stroll 2 has an issue because he breezed past him there. On my timing screen, I've got a yellow flag in the third sector and it's yeah. just popped up here. Out of the race goes Roman Grosjean through the gravel trap what? and he's, he's kept going. He's still got drive. But that's that's across the gravel and he's he's put gravel on it, saltless gold. That'll be a safety card to recover the gravel. I'm going to need a bigger outlet. I think he's kept going. Grosjean's kept going, but he's dropped down now to 18th place. I wonder what happened there. Lance Stroll is coming into the pit lane and we think it's terminal. Ugh. So, this is an unscheduled stop. So we've got to be scared for Honda. It's terminal. Ladies, and Ed. Large stroll out of the Grand Prix. The third retirement due to engine. Okay. What is going on? Well, it seems like nobody wants to win this Grand Prix today. I hate to say it, but there's a yellow flag on my monitor. And I wonder where that is. I keep seeing Raikkonen go down. Ocon pulls to the inside. Breezes past. Easy, but goes off the track and spins round. That's Kevin Magnussen. Kevin Magnussen locking the rears and going for a little spin in the, in the afternoon. He oh, stalled it. And he stalled. Now, this will either be a virtual safety car or a full safety car. But Hass's afternoon goes from bad to worse. It looks to be another issue with the brakes. He caught out Red Grosjean and the rears locking him caught out Magnussen. He's looked to... And safety car deployed. Safety car... It's the right time to go in and get you new tyres. And that must have been scary for Esteban Ocon. He must have thought he was going to take him. Look at that. Bang. Off. And the rears failed. And the safety car has been deployed on lap 26 of the Austrian Grand Prix as you Kevin Magnus is out. Yes. This means free pit stop. Yes. And Mercedes are going to respond. And they're bringing in one of their drivers now. Unfortunately, I can't tell you here. Grosjean here. Sorry. Uh, Giovinazzi in and Russell coming into the pit lane as well. Four retirements and Bottas coming in. I think Hamilton is as well. Well, this is going to be a free pit stop for the two Mercedes, as you say, Dad. Megan. Let's just hope they come out again. Yeah, if they, if they, if they can get their cars away. Safety car, 13 seconds locked in the pit lane. Mercedes are double stacking. And I think Albon's going to come in as well. So one stop. Hard's going on for Bottas. Here comes Hamilton now for a double stack. Softs will go off. Hards will go on. It'll take longer to get those tyres. Uh, to get heat to them on a day like this. Ferrari coming in for a double stack with Leclerc and Vettel. Albon's coming in as well, so there he is, look, just ahead of you. And off go the softs, on go the hards. This is a great stop for him. This might put him back into contention. Lando Norris in, Sergio Perez, Charles Leclerc in, and Carlos Sainz in, McLaren double stacking. Hards going on, and a problem with the rear for Lando Norris, but he doesn't lose him any time or position. Perez comes out, and that's going to make contact with Lando Norris. Unsafe release from Racing Point. Out goes Lando Norris ahead of Sergio Perez. They're racing point trying to get a fast one, but that'll be an unsafe release and the penalty might be coming the way for Sergio Perez. Vettel also in the pit lane. He's come out behind them, as has Pierre Gasly. Danny Kvyat coming in. All the teams double stacking to try and get the advantage of a one-stop race. It's going to be a sprint race to the end as we approach lap 27 of the Grand Prix. And Valtteri Bottas, as usual, determines when we can go green, but they can't go until the green flag is displayed from the start-finish marshal and the official green lights are on. And Bottas has gone early, but he hasn't got the safety car. No overtaking until the start-finish line as the safety car pulls in. That might be a bit close, Megan. If I would was Bottas, I would never restart it. <laughs> you have to. Green flag.
flag. Safety car in. He's hit that gas early, but no racing is supposed to happen until this green flag. There they are. The green flag and the green light boards. The race is back on here in Austria. Valtteri Bottas leads the way from Lewis Hamilton. Alexander Albon is third. Lando Norris fourth. Then Perez Leclerc as well. And already, look at this. Lando Norris under pressure, but so is Charles Leclerc. Left hand side, trying to go around the outside already. Carlos Sainz trying to get the move done. Pulls to the inside. Oh, Charles Leclerc pulls to the outside. Tries to get the move done. And out oh. goes Vettel. And there's contact. And Vettel's round again. Vettel facing the wrong way. And all that hard work goes back. And he's now going to be sent to 16th. And that was again another show of clearness. Careless from Sebastian Mattel. As Leclerc has to defend from Carlos Sainz. But Vettel went for the move. That's and he, w out, he went pirouetting, Dad. <laughs> Yeah, th th Sebastian should never put his nose in there. What a mistaker to make her. Let's have a look again. Up the inside, Megan, talk us through it. This is Vettel coming up in the second Ferrari. Up the inside, locks up. Ooh. And that was the lightest of kisses on Carlos Sainz. How was that lucky not to be a complete accident again? And it's Steve, oh, that was the sweetest spin as you could have because it has provided no damage to either car. But Vettel has flat spotted his tyres and has been sent to the back. Lando Norris defending the inside line, forcing almost Sergio Perez off the track. But Perez was looking for a way through. He gets the straighter exit. And here he goes. Lando can't defend. Albon is in third. And is Perez is next victim. Lando tries to come back. Perez goes very deep through turn four. It's such as gold. And Lando Norris is looking for that position back. Perez up to fourth in the racing point. And he, he can smell a podium. Now that's interesting. Chassis default 2 1. Now, now what is that all about? Is that is that the turning down of engine that we heard a couple of laps ago with Lewis? No, I think it's to do with the um, the front suspension over the kerbs. Red Bull are going to be rubbing their hands together. Sensor issues for both the Mercedes cars. That was the same as Lance Stroll that put him out of the Grand Prix. If those sensors fail, they're not allowed to race the cars. So they've got to stay off the curbs. Red Bull could be in for victory with Alexander Albon. This is dramatic stuff as we are on lap 43 of 71. And this is where it all comes in. As Hamilton's got DRS on Bottas. Is he going to try and make the move coming into turn four? Answer no. Although he did look to make the move. And out goes Grosjean. He's off again. And a bad day for Haas. Gets even worse. He's running 16th. But for the second time today, Roman Grosjean goes through a trip in the kitty litter. Keep your car on the road. I think that I think this looks like it, it's down at turn four again. I think this is brake issue again. And I think he's pulling off to retire. He is not. He's pulling off across the grass now. He's going lawnmower racing. Whee. And I'm not sure what's going on here, but I think this is going to retire the car. They've pulled out the dolly trolley for the middle. And Roman Grosjean is coming in to retire the car so and, and uh, Vettel's just passed Russell as well for 13th so Roman Grosjean will become our next eliminee in this Grand Prix oh one of the Williams is off and it's George Russell who's slowing coming down to turn four that's why Vettel got past him it's Russell slow and that dad is another Mercedes car with an issue Safety car deployed. This will neutralise the field as George Russell retires from the Grand Prix after losing power. It looks to be an ERS failure or maybe it's an ICE failure. Grosjean out as well. Two cars out in one lap and the safety car deployed for a second time this afternoon. The lights are off on the safety car. We are coming to a restart now. And Lewis Hamilton is right behind his teammate Valtteri Bottas. Bottas is waiting, waiting, waiting. Accelerates mid-corner. Catches out Hamilton. He's going to be under pressure to Sergio Perez. There is no overtaking until the safety car line. Until the start-finish line, sorry. And the safety car is in. The green flags are out. Are we going to go green this lap? Yes, we are. The green flag is out. We are back. 
racing here in Austria, and Leclerc is looking to the back. We've got a yellow flag already, Dad. Oh, what? We've got a yellow flag, and it's Kimi Raikkonen. Kimi Raikkonen is stopped on the track, and there's a safety car again. There's a safety car deployed again, according to my monitor. Kimi Raikkonen is out of this Grand Prix. He's stopped somewhere on the track. And, oh, there's a cut there, and Albon makes the move on Perez for third as the safety car comes out. But Albon made that move before the call was made official. Oh, and that's a wheel off. That's a wheel off for Kimi Raikkonen on the start finish straight. What the happened? What did happen? It looks like a wing fail. It looks like a nut failure. Did someone hit him or something? Or did he hit something? No, what? that's gone bouncing down. There's lucky there's no. Was it loose? Yes, I think it was. That's gone bouncing out of the last corner. The safety car is out for the third time today. Let's take a look on board with Sebastian Vettel. Coming through turn 9 and 10. Oh, and the suspension breaks. The wheel not goes and through the pit lane it goes. So just. I was lucky though. I was wondering why we weren't having the green lights on the board. I only saw a green flag and then immediately the yellow came out. Tyres flying everywhere. Raikkonen is out of the Grand Prix and the safety car is deployed. For the fourth time this afternoon, we're about to go green in Austria. And Valtteri Bottas will lead them away from Lewis Hamilton and Alexander Albon. Now promoted ahead of Sergio Perez. Green flag, track clear. As all the safety cars not in the pit lane yet. And Bottas going to overtake it. That's very close. Bottas might get done for that. He let them go too early. That was a very close call. The green flag is deployed. The race is back on here in Austria. Bottas leads, but for how long? Look at Alexander Albon. He got a perfect restart, and he's closing down on Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton makes a mistake coming out of turn one. The rear tyres had a kick of oversteer. Here comes Albon on those soft compound tyres. Hamilton's on the hearts. Albon sends it round the outside. Hamilton forced him to go a little bit deeper, but Albon's got the run. No DRS this lap. It's all going to be on the ER the ERS overtake. Downhill to Sotchless Gold. Hamilton defends the inside line. Albon tries to send it round the outside. Can he get the move done? Yes! Contact again! Contact again! Hamilton for the second Alvin. time! When Albon nearly wins a race, Hamilton takes him out! It happened in Brazil and it's happened in Austria! Hamilton will get a penalty for that for sure! And that promotes Sergio Perez to second place with Lando Norris up into third! Hamilton for sure will have a penalty! Does he have any damage as he spun round Albon? That happened in Brazil and it's happened again here today they've come together unbelievable Dad. yeah and i if you let's see it again because i believe that it was alex's fault you know i'm not you know, sure really? i'm not i'm not exactly sure but it just seemed like he talk. did it a bit too early goes round the outside dad talk us through it does it what do you think <laughs> turns in no it's hamilton it's, it's hamilton's fault he didn't no, turn it's not. no i'm sorry to yes it is dad i'm sorry to cut across look at hamilton's steering wheel mid corner he gets a snap of oversteer here and touches albon that is a hundred percent hamilton's fault there not yeah. albon's there was plenty of room look hamilton's car oversteers into the side into the back dad that is Al that's not Albon's fault that's Lewis's fault and it's under investigation by the stewards Lando Norris just tried to make a move there on Sergio Perez it gives the advantage to Charles Leclerc who steams around the outside Lando Norris has the inside line locks up don't take off Charles Leclerc and he just gets through Leclerc up into fourth place to chase after Sergio Perez I don't think it was Lewis's fault at all. Well, Lewis, you would. We'll see what the stewards say. It's the stewards in the end. We'll see what they say, and we'll get that in a can few laps. Can we appeal it? No. If, it could, if it's not in Lewis's favour, can we appeal it again and again and again until it is? Very funny. That's what Chris Rogers did. Talk about Ferrari. After all, it is a Red Bull. System. Yes, good point. But I'm not too sure. I don't think they can appeal. I don't think they can appeal. And I'm not appeal. being biased because it's Brit yeah. on Brit. I don't think they can appeal in race decision. Charles Leclerc sends it up the inside of Sergio Perez. Very late. Don't think Perez knew he was there. But Leclerc up into third and a time penalty of five.
five seconds to Lewis Hamilton for causing a collision. And that promotes Leclerc to second. Meanwhile, the two McLarens are having a battle for fifth and sixth. Lando locks up. Here comes Carlos Sainz around the outside. Lando has to defend the inside line. And they're going to go side by side to the go-kart part. Sainz holds it. Holds it around the outside. Off the track. Lando keeps the position, but that's very unfair. This is why Albon trying to go around the outside. Lewis Hamilton almost steers into him, gives See? him no room. He did not even move. You're, yeah. When you're going around a corner, you're meant to quickly move watch, around if there's a car. Watch next the wheel. Year. Watch the wheel of Lewis. You see now, oh. Not sure on the onboard. I think the, it's Lewis's fault. Off the offboard, you can clearly see the car moving. And up, Sebastian Vettel for 10th place. Trying to get through on Albon and trying to get through on Kvyat as well. And Sergio Perez has got a five-second time penalty. Why? Sergio Perez, a five-second time penalty. That puts Norris in the top. For speeding in the pit lane as Vettel tried to get past Kvyat for the final points paying position. He's in a battle with Albon. Dad, that promotes Lando Norris to third place. Lando gets a podium. At the moment. Yes. Oh, Albon. Albon stopping. Alexander Second. Albon. And Nicholas Latifi stopping as well. Nicholas Latifi stopped. He's out of the Grand Prix. No, he's got back going. Albon stopped. Albon's out. On the inside. And that's contact. Lando Norris trying to get past Sergio Perez. But has already got the penalty and they're going side by side and Lando Norris could get his first podium in Formula 1 as he, he has. passes pairs no he hasn't he's never no now because of two time penalties for two drivers he's in third place yes he is but he, he could get his first podium that's what I'm saying yellow flag for the track incident uh, at the moment no, no sign of that becoming a safety car but my goodness Leclerc is closing Hamilton's closing down to Bottas. Hamilton is close to Bottas. There's no point, mate. You've got a five-second time penalty. Even if you get, like, a second doubt, you're still not going to be in first place. Perez turned into Lando Norris there. What do you reckon, Dad? I'm not sure, actually. Turn, uh, Let's have a look. Yes, he no, turned. Yeah, Perez turned into him. Yeah, he turned into Lando. Lando's going to get a podium, though. Here comes uh, Sebastian Vettel. He makes the move for 10th place on Danny Kvyat. As Kvyat goes off the track. He has a spin. Unbelievable. We've got another yellow. What the hell's happened now? The, we've gone green and we've got another yellow flag for some reason. And Dad, I'll hate to point out, but why? Oh, puncture. Oh, fuff, fuff. And that is, that is Danny Kvyat with an exploding rear tyre. And he's gone straight on at turn one. And he's out of the Grand Prix. Has someone put pins in these or something? Nicholas Latifi is one more car away from the point on debut. How about that then? Wow. What a race in Austria. And we've got this all over again in seven days. Latifi's just like, this is what racing's like? <laughs> yeah, just waiting for everyone else to fall off. And I, I, I don't know who's going to be next. This is it. Look, look at the rear left. Bang. Exploding. And off goes Kvyat. And out of the Grand Prix. Albon out. Kvyat out. And Norris has set the fastest middle sector as he chases after them. Yeah, I can't remember. Oh, sorry. Which, no, no, no matter. I can't remember Dad, which one it is. Dad, what do you want to say? Well, with all the time penalties, um, you need to be an accountant to work out who's winning. I think Bottas is going to take the victory. I think that is certain. I think Leclerc will be second and Norris will be third. So it'll be Bottas with victory as Carlos Sainz passes for fourth place. So far it's Bottas, Leclerc, Norris in the technicality. This, so Bottas, Leclerc, Norris will be the top three. But it won't finish that way on the road. It's been one of the craziest Grand Prix to kick off a Formula One season in 2020. And look at that. Lando's outside the five seconds to Hamilton as Valtteri Bottas comes out of the last corner. He did it in Australia. He did it across the line in Austria. Valtteri Bottas wins the Austrian Grand Prix 
in second place for Lewis Hamilton on the road. Leclerc is third. But as we wait for the official announcement as to the order, what was it across the line? Lando Norris gets his first podium in Formula One. What a race. It's Bottas taking victory. Charles Leclerc is second. And it is third for McLaren and Lando Norris. And look how much it means to them. The man who has given us so much over the lockdown in terms of entertainment has got a podium in Formula One. And what an Austrian Grand Prix. Bottas wins. Leclerc second. Lando Norris is in third place. Dad, your opinion on that race? Oh, it's so exciting towards the end. It means that um, Lando gets his first um, thing. First you know, there's the result. Bottas, Leclerc, Norris, Hamilton, Hamilton. Sainz, Perez. Fastest lap and a bonus point goes to Lando Norris as well. <laughs> McLaren get the fastest lap for the first time in seven years. Oh my, and this is how he did it on the road. He got past Perez. Oh, this is Sainz passing. Sainz passing round the outside. Does the cutback on Perez. But Perez has dropped down the order. Perez stays in sixth. Perez stays sixth with that penalty. So the order at the moment... It's Bottas from Leclerc, Norris, Hamilton, Sainz, Perez, Gasly, Ocon, Giovinazzi, Vettel, and Nicholas Latifi. Next race, Styria. Megan, what a Grand Prix to get us started back in 2020. That had everything in it. Yeah, I mean, my entire sheet is like full. And that's the notes you make for this show. Yeah, and during the safety cars, I had time to draw a flower. Well, there was a lot of safety cars. It's a very beautiful flower uh, that you did to keep your mind occupied under the uh, safety cars. Uh, three safety cars in all in the race as well, but uh, it was a pretty bad day. So, Megan, why don't you take us through it lap by lap on your little lap chart you've got there before I give you what happened throughout the race? Well, lap 11, Verstappen stalls in pit. Lap 14, Verstappen is officially out due to engine and it, I think it was sensor issue. It was a sensor well. issue, yeah, yeah, for Verstappen as well. His engines were going a bit as well. Uh, that happened a lot today, <laughs> for everyone else's information. Lap 21, Ricardo officially out of the race due to, like, engine problems. Yeah, that was just mechanical. We still don't know what actually happened with him. I'm guessing it might be the gearbox. We were thinking that. We were, we were waiting for official confirmation. We're not going to check into that for tonight. Lap 22, Stroll is out due to a sensor issue and a possibility of a engine problem. Yep. Seems to be the main focus of today. And a safety car out lap 22. That was for Kevin Magnussen, wasn't it? Uh, or was that debris? That was due to Stroll spinning. Yes, that was it. Stroll having the spin, yeah. Safety car... I already said that. Safety car in lap 30. That's eight thing. That's eight laps. The wind is very powerful here, as you can see. It's really throwing the uh, flags I feel around. Like that's try and hit me in the head but don't worry i've had a whole entire cabinet shelf fall on my head once yes she's I was fine four. she's fine i've also fell on a fire it wasn't on it was an electric fire <laughs> yeah there's a long long story that we'll get into throughout the season about that i Although hit my head a lot uh, continue, I'm fine, though. continue then what happened after the second um magnuson out lap 24 i put it in the wrong order yes so. it was that, yeah. russell and grosjean out both on lap 51. They literally went like 10 seconds after each other. Dominoes falling. There was a lot, an 11 lap run where we just had cars retiring again and again yeah. and again and again. Yeah, and it's Raikkonen out lap 55. And I put next to it, we all go bye bye. Yeah, the wheel falling off the front there. Uh, anything else for the race? Oh, yeah. Go on. Safety car out lap 55 because of. The wheel. The wheel and Ricardo and uh, Raikkonen's car on the pit straight. Yeah, safety car in lap 61. Um, Albon hit by Hamilton lap 61, causing a 
um, investigation, which ended up in getting Hamilton a five-second time penalty. It did. I've got the reason for it here. Yeah. Albon stops lap 69, which I think is down to the incident. Yes, and it was also an electrical issue, the same as what Max Verstappen had in the race that forced him out. I've got it all in my uh, notebook, but Megan's going to go through her results first. Anchor the puncture out lap 70, literally the last... Just Two laps. Yeah, and then out of the race. No, actually, the last lap. Yeah, lap 70, yeah. Mm. Uh, so, let's go through it team I by not team. i the penalties. <laughs> oh, go on, penalties. This is um, a long list. Okay, incident between sites and Vettel noted. No investigation necessary. Black and white flag for Grosjean exceeding track limits. Alban and Hamilton under investigation. Lap 63, time penalty. Hamilton, five seconds, lap 66. Time penalty, Perez, five seconds, lap 69. A lot of penalties and a lot of action in the opening race of the season. Right, let's go through, let's go through it team by team. And it started uh, with in the race preview show we were saying about how we heard of a investigation into Lewis Hamilton, a protest by Red Bull that ended up as a three-place grid penalty for Lewis Hamilton for failing to slow under the yellow flags and qualifying. Fair decision, but it put him down to fifth on the grid and that promoted Verstappen to second on the on Yeah, the he's not having a very good weekend. No, he's not. It was It's a weekend from hell uh, for uh, Lewis Hamilton. Uh, but Bottas, let's go through them team by team and how they currently stand in the Constructors' title. Let's start off with Mercedes. Bottas won the race. Hamilton finished in fourth with a five-second time penalty. Mercedes had sensor issues on both cars during the race uh, with the gearbox and had to avoid the curbs in fear of breaking uh, the sensors and that would have led to them having to retire from the race. Bottas actually had the issue worse than Lewis. Lewis could have pushed uh, for victory but that contact with Alexander Albon uh, after the safety car came in led to a five second time penalty and the stewards this is from the official document I've got it in front of me the stewards reviewed video evidence that showed that car 23 of Albon and car 44 of Hamilton were side by side approaching the apex of turn four they negotiated the turn side by side but car 23 of Albon had a better exit and was in the process of passing car 44 car 44 was drifting uh, to the outside of the exit turn four and consequently making contact with the rear right wheel of car 23 causing Albon to spin the stewards determined that car 44 is at fault and to blame for the incident you agreed with that in the comments box but Dad didn't. No, but Birch, that's because reporter. I feel he's biased towards Mercedes and Hamilton. Well, it's not really biased, but the, the stewards saw it your way and they gave him the penalty. Yeah. I think that was the same decision because Hamilton didn't turn as much as he could. Albon was the car ahead. He should have ha- g- given him more room and you the steering wheel works both as ways. You well that Hamilton didn't properly turn Yeah, the it corner. was very much at a he was just like, 90 oh degree. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, it was very much at a 90 degree angle. It never once like, turned to Imagine this is Albon and this is Hamilton. Yeah, it was just a drifting competition in. Yeah. Uh, moving on then to McLaren. They are second in the constructors' title, impressively. Lando Norris getting his first ever podium in Formula One. He finishes in third. Carlos Sainz finishing fifth. This is McLaren's second podium in three races, but separated by over seven months, uh, which is a strange stat. Lando Norris was promoted to third on the grid due to that penalty for Lewis Hamilton after Red Bull appealed as well. Uh, s- but uh, he got third on the road again today from Lewis Hamilton due to a Hamilton penalty. So I think Lando Norris should be buying Lewis Hamilton a few drinks, socially distanced, of course. Yeah. Uh, Carlos Sainz had contact with Vettel during the race, but his car was not damaged. McLaren are uh, racing with the same package that they took to the race that never was in Australia, but they have got updates coming for Hungary. So they could be a challenge for third place in the constructors this year. Great race, though, for Lando Norris today. Bad luck for Carlos Sainz with that contact with Vettel, but uh, at least it didn't damage his car. Yeah, I mean, that's the main bit. Every s- especially since everyone's cars were just going bye bye. I'm hold on. How many were there out? One, two, Ooh. three, four, five. Eleven six, finished. Eight. That's what nine. Nine. Cars? Nine cars out. Yeah. Nine cars. Uh, just quickly on to Ferrari then. Charles Leclerc finished second and Sebastian Vettel finished tenth. But of course, Leclerc got that second. It would have been third, but he got that second place due to the Hamilton penalty. He'll also be dro- uh, buying Hamilton a few drinks. Yes, indeed. But uh, Leclerc He's second. He's going to need it. Ferrari, we know, had an uncompetitive car this weekend. They, we know that they're, they're going to improve it going into Hungary. Mm. But they qualified seventh 
and 10th on the grid and Leclerc, uh, sorry, 7th and 11th on the grid and then Leclerc has taken second place. That's a major result for a car that is uncompetitive in their eyes. Yeah, it really is. And I've just noticed something that both of the Red Bulls, who are usually a reading team, are out. Yes. Meaning they are further down the championship. And unlike most years, they possibly, actually, I don't think they have any chance of winning the Constructors, constructors Championship yeah. this year. I agree with you, because as we said in the commentary, when Verstappen retired, you missed one race out of this current eight race schedule. That's gonna put you on the back foot for a long time. Yeah. So that is real bad for them. Uh, let's move on to- uh, We are also having a bad Yeah, they came here well. this weekend with a car they knew was uh, undeveloped and discovering all that lot. Uh, Vettel, as I said, had that contact with Carlos Sainz at turn three and spinning round, but he fought back to 10th place to gain a point. On to racing point, they had a strong weekend, yeah. but only for Sergio Perez. They looked dominant in the practice sessions. Perez finished in sixth place, but, Lando, uh, but Lance Stroll, 18th with a retirement a mixed day for racing point both cars started in the top 10 Perez on f was out for a podium but was given a five second time penalty for speeding in the pit lane dropped down to sixth and had contact with Lando Norris on the road as Norris went for fourth place and then uh, Carlos Sainz went right round the outside at turn four, Stroll was forced to retire after a sensor issue detected problems with his gearbox. This started the Mercedes team worrying about their cars. So points for Racing Point, but it could have been so much more today, Megan, uh, if it wasn't for those sensor issues. They could have got at least a uh, third place and a fourth place. Yeah, I agree. It is just... Oh, it's a crazy race, to be honest. It's Everything's hard to happening, keep yeah. up with. Uh, moving on, Alpha Ture, uh, Gasly 7th, Kvyat in 12th place. Points on debut for the new team name uh, as well, which is great. Strong race for the team. Currently beating the main Red Bull team, of course, in the Constructors title, uh, with scoring points as well. Yes, it's only four points, but that's four more points than Red Bull have got. Kvyat, though, as you said, Megan, with uh, a few laps to go, two laps to go, a massive blowout of the rear left tyre down turn one. Now, what was that all about? Have Pirelli got an issue, or was it that the tyre was cut on the debris from Raikkonen? It was probably cut on the debris, since there was a lot of that revolving around the track, and it's a possibility if that soon wasn't picked up. Yes, and uh, it was a very scary accident for Danny Kvyat, but he is okay. Yeah. He just went straight on with the tyre exploding. On to Renault then. Ocon, on his return to Formula 1, is in 8th place, scoring points. Danny Ricciardo, though, 19th, out of the race as well, quite early on. Uh, yes, but Esteban Ocon, scoring points on his return to Formula 1. A strong day for him and a weekend he can be proud of going forward into this currently remaining seven races. Ricciardo was forced to retire early on. The car went into limp home mode, and the reason is still being investigated now as to why but you said it was possibly a gearbox issue as well yeah i reckon it was a gearbox issue because it looked like it was stopping but it wasn't stopping and that's usually what a gearbox thing looks like yes slowing really slowly until it comes to its eventual downfall stopping. we'll have to keep an eye out on what that is and get that to you in the grand review podcast next thursday's preview show uh, four teams left now. On to Alfa Romeo. Uh, Giovinazzi finished in ninth. Kimi Raikkonen fourteenth with the DNF. Giovinazzi gets two points on the board for the ninth place today. Uh, massive improvement in the race compared to the weekend so far. Alfa Romeo still have a long way to go though in development of this car. They know they have problems with it. But Kimi Raikkonen on the restart of the second safety car, his front right wheel detached with a broken wheel nut and the tyre went flying across the track. Raikkonen out of the race, causing the safety car but a massive improvement needed for Alfa Romeo this weekend but a scary incident for Sebastian Vettel who's behind uh, Kimi Raikkonen there Megan and he just avoided the tyre uh, but uh, Raikkonen we all go bye bye yes we all go bye bye uh, moving on to oh sorry were you going to say something there no. Okay, sorry. On to Williams then. It's getting very dark in our studio, by the way, so we're struggling to see. Uh, on to Williams then, who Nicholas Latifi on his Formula 1 debut started 20th, finished 11th on the road, so close to the points. I said in the commentary, only one more car needed to fall out and Williams would have got a point. That is so unlucky. I think if one more car fell out, then it would have been Gasly since he was a bit 
Slow. Yes, it would have been Gasly because he was going slow on the last lap, as you said. Yeah. Uh, he dropped about four or five seconds, actually, on the on the, on the results. Yeah. Uh, yes, Just two more laps and he would have been gone. <laughs> yes, two more. Uh, so close to the point today for Williams, but a strong result, uh, result for Latifi on his debut after starting 20th and said. Third career timer for George Russell today after his car lost all power and yeah. caused the second safety car of the day. And like with Alfa Romeo, a lot of improvements needed at Williams, but a good result for once the team and a positive step for next weekend as well yeah. but just going forward very unusual that we saw quite a lot of mechanical issues going wrong with the cars today yeah, not I mean only in formula one but also in formula two yeah i mean there was sorry if you saw that bird flying by <laughs> we've got a nest as we said all weekend and it's just flying around right now megan it's probably annoyed yes that does yeah there was three safety cars and Five Only five yellows. So that's, that's three of them that yeah. turned into safety cars. Unbelievable, isn't it? Um, lot, of, lot, of, lot of mechanical issues that bird interrupted us. A lot of mechanical issues this weekend as well. Is that just first race back after seven months off the technical gremlins getting into the cars or is that something we've got to be worried about these, about these new 2020 cars? I think we should be worried about it because no way that's just a coincidence. I mean, these cars have been pu basically put on ice since yeah. Australia and it they haven't been able to test drive them as much yeah. throughout and everyone knows when a car isn't driven around as much then they start to go bad yeah the batteries all die out as well i mm. completely agree with you there as well so that's going to be an interesting one uh news just in actually from the kimi raikkonen so this is breaking news kimi raikkonen's uh the stewards investigated why the wheel not failed uh they have breached article 28.13 of the sporting regulations and released from a pit stop in an unsafe condition the competitor uh, this is alfa romeo is fined five thousand euros the stewards has heard from the team representative and reviewed video and telemetry excuse me, evidence uh, provided by the FI technical delegate as well as well the telemetry provided by the team. Having examined photos of the damaged wheel and the axle shaft, it is evident that the wheel nut uh, of the front wheel got cross-threaded ah, during the wheel change, uh, which was not identified with by the wheel gun operator. As a consequence, the right back wheel, uh, well, actually it was the front, wasn't it? It was the, it was the front, so I don't know why that's wrong, uh, went off the car uh, when he was back in the race, the stewards accept, however, that neither the team nor the driver had the opportunity to realise. It was a left as well. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Yeah, that the stewards, that the, uh, the stewards accept that, however, that neither the team nor the driver had the opportunity to realise that the car was in an unsafe condition and therefore did not stop the car. Taking this into account, a fine of five thousand euros is appropriate. I agree with that. Yeah, as long as it's not too Icon in himself. No, it's, it's too Alfa Romeo. Might hurt the piggy, the piggy bank, but it's only five grand. Yeah. In Formula One, where there's millions, 145 million cost cap, five grand is basically just like a pound to us. Uh, where basically were, like an orange. Uh, where were we? Just past Williams, didn't we? So on to Red Bull. Well, they had the day from hell. One of only two teams not to finish uh, with both cars. Who was uh, the other? A uh, Haas. Yeah. Not surprising. Red Bull. Albon officially on the road in 13th, DNF. Verstappen, 20th, DNF. And they had a bad day at their home Grand Prix. Uh, Verstappen challenging early on the Mercedes. He was on a medium compound strategy. So he's trying to one stop from the mediums to the hards and go longer than the Mercedes who were on the uh, soft compound, the soft compound tyres. It could have worked. But again, a sensor issue and then an engine failure. And the car cutting out into anti-stall prevented it. Bad day. And the same then later happened to Albon as well. So, Megan, uh, just asking you a question. Has Red Bull got a serious problem? Yes. They are no longer in the Constructors' Championship as, as everyone a fight. else is yeah, aware. I mean, they may as well just take it lying down from now on because there's no way they're climbing back up from this no they've they've had a double dnf in a racing season that is already so short i agree it's gonna be yeah. a massive struggle for them as well bad day for albon he went round the outside of lewis hamilton got taken he out again so well. i know he could have won this race i said at one point yeah. albon could win this race yeah and then hamilton decides nope that happened in brazil as well Hamilton hit Albon in Brazil. What does he have in against Aust him? In Austria. 
<laughs> Hamilton hits Albon. They need to have words. Yeah, they do. I think an apology is on the cards for Hamilton. I think he's already said that in the press conference. Haas now, the final team. Double DNF for them, and they're the last team in the Constructors' Championship. Uh, Grosjean finished 16th DNF, and Magnussen finished 17th DNF. The reason they're last in the Constructors' Championship, not Red Bull, even though Verstappen was 20th, the average finishing position, with Haas being 16th and 17th, puts them last. Albon finished 13th officially, and Verstappen 20th officially, even though they all DNF'd. It's the way the order goes in positions. So Haas finished 16th and 17th. The second time, uh, sorry, the second team I to have a... Right. Yeah, you did. The second team to have a double DNF. Haas have sorted out all of the problems with its brakes again. Uh, but uh, they thought finally, oh, we've got some brake working. No, brake failures for both cars today and then the telemetry goes off. And he's going to have to wait another year to try for the championship as well as Red Bull. It started very weird though, didn't it? Because Grosjean went off the track at turn four and he had to pit. He had, a, he had put a wheel on the back of the, of the gravel, spun the car around, had to pit for new tyres. Yeah, I felt like every single time a driver went in and that pit, they never came out again. Yes, and then Kevin Magnussen, when being passed by Esteban Ocon, Brake failed, rears locked, round he went, and the anti-store came in, and he was out of the race as well. That calls the first safety car on lap 26, I want to say. Yes. Uh, but bad day. And then Grosjean retired later on in the race as well. Megan, your opinion? This race, it's been chaotic as we finish it now. It's been chaotic. Who's your driver of the day, if you can name one? Lando Norris, because he finally got a podium. I completely agree with that as well. Mm. Right, Megan, next weekend, the Styrian Grand Prix, or the Stiermark Grand Prix, it's actually called, but uh, <laughs> it's Styria, so we're in Styria. Um, same track, rain predicted. Could throw up everything again. Who do you predict is going to predict strongly next weekend based on this race? Leclerc. You're going for Leclerc? Yeah, I'm just hoping. I mean, I hope he does well in a Rain's the great equaliser. Might help Ferrari out in a wet race. Yeah, might also help Sainz out. I just have, I still hold hope for Sainz. Well, you, it seems to be a good because McLaren seems to be strong this year. Yeah. Right, let's take a look then at the drivers and constructors standings. So after one race, it's Valtteri Bottas leading the way on 25 points. Charles Leclerc second on 18. Lando Norris gets 15 points for third plus one. Uh, point for the fastest lap. Hamilton fourth on 12, and then we get 10 points for Carlos Sainz, eight for, Pier uh, for Sergio Perez, six for Gasly, four for Ocon, two for Giovinazzi, and Sebastian Vettel only has one point to his name. In the constructor standings, Mercedes lead the way 37 points. McLaren on 26, the first time McLaren are up there in second place in the constructors for a very long time. And how mid-2000s is this? Because Ferrari are in third. It's Mercedes, McLaren and Ferrari, the top three in the constructors. 19 points to them. Racing point, I only have eight, po eight points to their name. Alfa Torrey has six, Renault four, Alfa Romeo two, and three teams without any points on the board so far are Williams, Red Bull and Haas. So that's it from round one of 2020, the Austrian Grand Prix here at the Red Bull Run in Spielberg. We are back in just a few days' time for all of the action back here at the Red Bull Ring, the first ever double back-to-back -back race in Formula One. It's not called Austria 2, though. It's going to be called the Stiermark Grand Prix due to being in the region of Styria here in Austria, so it's going to be an interesting new Grand Prix title, but if this is anything to go by, we're in for an absolute cracker in just seven days' time as well. We'll be back Thursday for the weekend preview. Friday, we'll be live again for first practice, followed by the Friday practice review in the afternoon. Saturday, in between qualifying and free practice three, we'll have the review session. And then on Sunday, two shows. The Sunday race preview in the morning, just before the race starts, and a couple of hours after the race for the Sunday race review as well. My thanks this weekend to Ian Birch, my dad, and Megan Birch, sister from, uh, well, hell really, but uh, that's another matter. Nah, she's lovely, really. Uh, she was supposed to be in this half of the programme, as you know, but that was filmed a couple of days ago. So, we'll be back in a few days' time, but leaving here, who would have predicted? Valtteri Bottas leading the championship from Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris. A confusing first race, but boy, it's good to have Formula 1 back. We'll see you next weekend for the Steermark Grand Prix. Bye for now.